Hello, everyone. Today is Saturday, April 10th, 2021. Welcome to our contract trust conference call. We're not accountants, tax professionals, lawyers, or currency dealers. We're not engaged in rendering legal, tax, accounting, or other professional advice. Should you require those services, you should retain competent advice from a professional in that field. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today. My name is Carol Worlius, and my associate, the one and only Jim Knox, and I have these calls every second and fourth Saturday of the month. These calls are recorded and available on our website, www.indicatorinformation.com, iqds.com, IQ, excuse me, IQ, iqdcalls.com and YouTube. As we get closer and closer to our expected event, we said this would be a good time to review our common law contract trust and why we think is the best vehicle for you to protect your assets. As always, your questions are welcome. Star six to raise your hand. And we do plan on dedicating the major portion of this call to Q&A. So if you have a question, you know, we'll see if we can take it in turn. Um, for the most part, we'll just get started. Now, most of you are aware that we offer and create non-grant or irrevocable common law contract business trust, which is quite a mouthful. So for the sake of simplicity, we refer to it as a contract trust. It is technically a business trust, but we have opted to drop the word business from the title as it sometimes causes confusion. If your trust does say business trust, it's okay. It's still very, very valid. Now, prudent estate planning compels you to not own anything. Asset management, not ownership, is the best method available to reduce the risk of loss. You can do this by utilizing the contract trust. No insurance at any cost can furnish the protection that the contract trust can provide. It provides protection for you, your family, your goals, and objectives. Hang on a second here. Okay. Remember, the secret of real wealth is not ownership, but control. The use of the contract trust that we offer totally eliminates probate and inheritance tax. Unlike a revocable grantor trust, this contract trust is irrevocable. And irrevocable simply means that no one can tell you to terminate the trust to pay someone else. So your assets are protected from anyone trying to get money from you personally. The contract trust is created in contemplation of life, not death. The most significant distinctions between revocable and irrevocable trusts are the estate tax considerations. Property that you place in an irrevocable trust is no longer considered part of your estate, meaning that the property typically isn't included in your estate's value when it comes to determine if you owe death taxes and if so, how much. And the management of any trust lies with the trustee. One of the major benefits is that the contract trust allows you to be the trustee of your own trust. You retain full management, control, and benefit of the assets of the trust. There's no manager, protector, outside trustee, or anyone else telling you what you cannot, can and cannot do. So there's no one between you and your money. Additionally, uh, with our trust, there are no annual fees. It's private, not required to be registered in any state except Nevada, unless it's actively engaged in operating a business. This, of course, ensures your privacy. Uh, the trust owns its assets in fee simple, meaning 100% of the assets belong to the trust, and is managed by one or more trustees. The assets of the trust will never be subject to probate or inheritance and estate taxes. Uh, the assets of the trust are protected from third-party creditors who may have an issue with you personally. You can name your spouse as co-trustee. One of you or both of you can become executive trustees, allowing one to act on the behalf of other. You must designate one or more successor trustees. Specify they both become trustees at the same time or one goes before the other. You can change this designation at any time for any reason. And you know what, folks? You cannot be your own successor trustee. Your spouse cannot be his or her own successor trustee. Once you're gone, you're gone. So that's why we typically suggest um, your children as successor trustees. When the trust is created, as if you, you need to name a successor trustee. That's usually your kids. If they are minors, you can name an interim successor trustee to manage the trust on their behalf until they're old enough and mature enough to handle it. If your kids are minors, I suggest the age at which they take over for the interim successor trustee to be at least 25 because 
you know, face it, some kids are more, um, uh, some are more mature than others. That's all there is, you know. You can add a bloodline clause to ensure that your family's generational wealth does not fall into others' hands. Many of us will be creating generational wealth when this event occurs. While you can't rule from the grave, you can specify that all future trustees be part of your bloodline to be proven by a DNA test. For instance, you could name your daughter a successor trustee, and she can name her children, but not her husband. We have added a sense thrift clause so no future trustee, successor trustee, or certificate holder shall have any right to alienate, that's not the right, Joe, I know you know how to say that, <laughs> encumber and hypothecate any interest in the trust or pledge, pledge his or her possible share of trust income. Record keeping is minimal, and you can do it yourself. We give you very specific directions to operating your trust as well as instructions on writing minutes to document your actions. This saves you time and money. Our website, indicatorinformation.com, is full of sample minutes for your use. Uh, the contract trust, again, is irrevocable common law contract trust. It is actually a contract and trust format. And we are guaranteed the right to contract by the U.S. Constitution. And I think I'll break for a second because I have a caller here. Let's see. If I can get her back. Cher, Cher are you there? No, no. Cher? No, it keeps going to, to mute. So please try again, Jeff. Uh, we are often asked about getting money out of the trust. As trustee, you were entitled to a salary. While this is taxable to you, we think it's still a good idea. You can take as much or as little as you determine you need. If you find you can't make it in 10 grand a month, think of yourself a raise. But don't forget, this is a taxable event. You are also entitled to a share of distribution, much like the stock dividend if you, you the trustee, decides to make one. Again, this is taxable income to you. Creating secondary contract trusts, like real estate or vehicle trusts, is an excellent way to purchase that new house or fancy car without creating a loan or taxable event. That way the new trust owns the asset from day one, it's not a taxable event, and you don't have to make any payments. You could also borrow from the trust. A big question for me is how do I pay off my house or how do I purchase new property? There are actually several ways to do this. You could borrow money from the trust personally, essentially a new mortgage or refi that you control, or the trust could pay off or purchase the property itself. In either, scenario, in either case scenario, you still have owning property in your own name, which is not a good idea if you're trying to keep a low profile. A better option is to obtain a mortgage from the trust, secured with a promissory note, and put the house into a real estate trust. This is also not a taxable event. Remember, if you borrow money from the trust, you must make payments, even if it's just a nominal amount for interest. So how about a 10-year renewable balloon note at 2% interest? You know. You must make interest payments or the IRS will consider it a gift. We do have specific contracts and minutes to facilitate these options for additional trusts. You could also let the trust pay for your business expenses. You will have office expenses, professional assistance, as well as automobile expenses. If you're planning a trip, make it a business trip. So you can write off most of these expenses, like, likewise with a golf or tennis membership. You need to expand, excuse me, expand your circle of potential business offers, right? So as you're thinking about buying a property in Europe, why not make it a working vacation? You know, talk to realtors, pick up business cards, etc. I'm sure you'll meet a lot of business contacts on the golf course, tennis court, marina, etc. Well, maybe the trust can contribute to the cost of those memberships. Well, I wouldn't try to write off the cost of everything. This is certainly a good way to pay for those expenses. The trust can also pay for your insurance needs. Most of these expenses are tax deductible to the contract trust. Regardless of which method or combination of methods you choose, be sure to write minutes to support your actions. You must be diligent in keeping the contract as legal and in compliance with federal, state, county, and city codes. So we're often asked, will I need more than one contract trust? Well, you probably don't need additional contract trust at this point. You will most likely want to diversify post-event. We like to call this first contract trust your mother trust. It is and should stay private. 
only to you and your private banker or wealth manager. We suggest that you never purchase anything from this trust and never do online banking from this trust. You won't even need checks or debit cards. All your transactions should be face-to-face -face with your personal banker whenever possible. Once the initial business of the exchange redemption has settled down, you may wish to create additional contract trusts for specific needs. We uh, have secondary trusts such as management trusts, real estate trusts, vehicle trusts, and charitable trusts. And we have recently decided to add another trust to our lineup. Uh, a lot of folks have been gifted currency or zip. Uh, they've not planned for this. They don't necessarily have any humanitarian goals and are likely like fish out of water. Uh, for that reason, we have created a family maintenance trust that's designed for those who do not have a lot of currency or zip, but hopefully will have enough to care for their families for a while. It will allow for a small addition to the monthly income flow. Uh, purchase to maintain a new home or car, uh, gift the loans to family members on an individual case-by-case -case basis. And they will still have access to our website, but their trustee responsibility should be minimal. And we've also decided to lower the price of our real estate trust to 1845 instead of 1945. All our secondary trusts are still 1695. So, Jim, what's on your mind today? I don't see any questions, so we'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we got a little bit of noise behind you, but that's okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, close the door. Go ahead. All right. Well, it's not on a lot on my mind. There was an interesting call last night that I was party to, um, and uh, it was a good call. We learned quite a bit about what the possible outcome is going to be. But what I really took away from that call is how to manage your family. And I, I thought that we should talk a little bit about that. Dom did an excellent job last night talking about that. And what he said is, don't go out and just give your family a bunch of money. You know, if you want to help somebody, and they pay off their house or pay off the car, go with them to the bank and pay it off. Don't give them the money. Uh, so often people, and I have this issue in my family, when people came into some money, they just went wild and crazy, and uh, with no time at all, it was gone. They had no, they weren't cognizant of how fast money flows out of your hands. Um, so what he was just saying, if you're going to go help somebody, your family members, there's no problem there. Just go pay for it. Don't give them a bunch of money. Just go pay their things off if that's what you need to do. That's where their, their pain is. they got a car that, or a house payment. Pay it off, but don't give them a bunch of money. And I thought that was very, very sage advice. I've seen, um, yeah, actually in my life, I, I came a little bit of money one time and I was not really prepared for it. And I kind of went through it fairly quickly. And I thought after the fact, wow, that sure, that sure went away in a hurry. And so we all have had some experience like that. And if we've, fortunately, most of us now have been around this supposed uh, RV for quite some time and we have been able to internalize the fact that we're going to have this money and we've been planning and we know that we have to be careful and we've been preached at and we've been, you know, about you got to be careful of the money. It's, it's a one-time deal. It's a, and so we're ready. I think a lot of us are ready. We'll be able to manage it. Yeah, we'll buy a few toys. Nothing exact, you know, really exorbitant something. Uh, but we have to be cognizant that if we give money to people that have not been mentally prepared for it, they're not going to do good things with it. They're going to blow it. So other than that, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the trust, uh, the fact that um, they've been around a long time. Uh, as a matter of fact, trust originated back in, was the 1500s? I believe it was, Carol. With I think the, so. Uh, it's, it's not even earlier than that. It's been a long, long time. Yeah, and what happened, how that came about was the kings had a bunch of noblemen that represented them. And so uh, whenever they would go off to war for the king, if they lost their life, the king would take all their property. So it was a win-win situation for the king, but not for the noblemen or their family. Mm -hmm. So the noblemen got together and said, look, we've got to stop this. So they put everything in trust. So one nobleman would hold all the assets for the other nobleman while they went off to war. And if something happened, then he just managed it for the family. The king couldn't get it. And that's basically what this whole thing, how this whole thing started, you know, uh, the very wealthy people have been using this for 
eons. I, I just noticed on the news today that uh, the super yacht business and the mega airplane business, airplane business is still booming because the one percenters, the, the people who got the money, they've not been hurt from all the stuff that we're going through. And that kind of annoys me to no end. But the article went on to say that most of these purchases have been put into uh, financial vehicles, they call them, financial vehicles. Well, that translates to trust. So the mega wealthy and the super wealthy are still hard at it, having a great time, and we're down here trying to survive. Something doesn't just look right for me on that one. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of where we're at. So the trust business is, um, is booming. They're using it. I don't know what else to say, Carol. We need some guidance here. We need some questions. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, we have a few questions that have been emailed, and I know this particular gentleman can't listen live, so I will ask the question. He has a question about funding the management trust. He hasn't heard his question asked yet. Uh, how can we add more funds to the management trust in the future? You want to handle that one? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I sent an email to a guy about that. I'll just pull it out. It's the, the same one, yeah. Yeah, I know. Let me get that one. Because was, I thought about it when I sent it. I thought, this is good. Um, um, Got to find it. There it is. So, yeah, his, name is, his name is Robert. Yep, I got it. So I put mm -hmm. down, great question. You are not funding the management trust after the initial funding. It is managing the funded real estate trust, the funded car trust, or whatever trust you're, you are creating. The account or accounts will be for the other trusts, which are funded by the mother of trust. The money does not belong to the management trust. It belongs to the other trust, such as the real estate, the car trust, whatever it may be, and is contracted to pay the bills for the contractees, as stated in the contract between the management trust and the real estate trust or the car trust. So when you're adding more money to the management trust, you're really not adding it to the management trust ownership. You're adding it to the management trust to, to handle financial affairs for other trusts that are contracting to it. So it should not have to have any, any money of its own once it's established. You could put in there a clause that, you know, for every time that the management trust does a transaction for the real estate trust, it takes a couple bucks, so it's got a little bit of money in its bank account to maintain it. You can pay it. So that's one way to, to create some money there. And since you're going to be managing the management trust, that's a great way to move some money into the management trust that you can draw off as a salary. So the management trust, once it's established, which is funded by the mother of trust, that's it. It's, it's, it's done. It has to create its own income. So you do it through the contracts. So hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, the real estate... So let's back up two steps. So you want to buy some real estate. The mother of the trust then would fund the real estate trust. And in that funding, it could put enough in there to buy the house, to maintain the house, pay the taxes, so on and so for X amount of years. And so the real estate trust does not have an EI number, so it doesn't have a bank account. So it contracts to the management trust. So when the funds come in for the real estate, it's actually put into the management trust account on behalf of the real estate trust because they have a contract to do this. So it's kind of like a three-party contract. The real estate trust is contracted from the, the mother of the trust to get the money, and then it goes, it's dropped into the management trust to pay all the bills, buy the house, pay the, the utilities, whatever you've set up. Whatever you put in the contract is what it will do for you, which is unique because you get to write the contract the way you want it. So I think that would... Mm -hmm pretty much handle that question. You want yeah, to that, I think girl? so. We have, we have another one here. Um, okay. What about, um, the question is, I think she asked us of, a, of, a T, of TNT. I have a trust. Well, I still need a foundation to give people and organizations. Well, um, there's, very, there's various ways to do that. And I'm going to say that right now that's changing because I think our, our laws are changing, our, our financial laws. I think that that's a question we're going to have to bring up with wealth managers, exactly what's the new entity that we can use to do that. 
as it stands right now, we could use a trust. But I think yeah. all that's going to change with the IRS taking and being dissolved. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, okay. Let's see if we have anybody whose hands are raised. So I have a different screen here. Well, if I sound like I'm a little off my game today, is because I am. Um, just for the audience, I I was in a shop working on one of my vehicles just and I kind of banged myself up a little bit. So I had a real oh, no. problem. Yeah, yeah, it's my back again. It was. Okay. But anyway, if, I'm, if I sound like I'm off my game, it's because I took a pain pill this morning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. The, okay, let's it's see. The, we get a few in. It's too. the candy of the senior citizens. Exactly, yeah. Hang on a second. Good morning, Gary. Would you give a question today? Yes, I do. Good morning, Jim and Carol. Uh, question, if we want to buy some real estate, but we want to have somebody else purchase it, like the, the president of the, corp, of the uh, trust purchase it, how do we assign uh, somebody as president to purchase the property so that our name isn't on it when we initially buy it? I was looking okay, to see Jim, if uh, there's a minute for that. Or, okay, yeah. Uh, did, Jim, did you have time to put that on the website? Nope. Um, I okay. had that little urgency this week. It was an emergency, but it was an urgency. But I will get it on today. We okay, have cool. all of that written out, Gary. Now that you mentioned it, and Carol sent me to put on the website, and then I had an issue this week that I just couldn't get everything done. Uh, but I'll put it on today. I'm not going anywhere today except for here at the house. All right, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Uh huh. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mark. Carol's awesome. How question. are you doing today? Hi, Carol. Hi, Jim. How are you guys? Good. Well, thank you. How are you, Mark? Oh, uh, doing well so far. Very, very, okay. as a neophyte with all this, very confused. Um, <laughs> so, so Jim, what you were talking about before, the management trust is the contract trust, I assume, correct? Correct. It's a contract trust. And it's okay. uh, designed, let me jump in real quick and tell you a little bit about it, and then maybe that'll help. If not, ask a question about it. Uh, it's designed to allow you to have one entity to write the checks to control a lot of your assets. For example, your real estate, your automobiles, your boats, um, your, re your, your um, home in, in, the, in, you know, in Biscayne or whatever it may be. You, won't, you don't want to have to write a whole bunch of checks. You don't want to have to have a whole bunch of bookkeeping. You want all your bookkeeping in one central location so you know exactly where you stand at all times. So we put together this management trust idea, and we've got it pretty well working for us, where you just contract from one trust to another. So the real estate trust does not have an EI number, but the management trust does. The automobile trust does not have an EI number, but the management trust does. So it keeps your paperwork to a minimum. And the, you know, as far as we're concerned, the less the government knows about what we do, the better we are. Because the 10 most mm -hmm. devastating words you'll ever hear in your life is, I'm from your government and I'm here to help you. We know that doesn't work. <laughs> well, so that's the damn trust, these, uh, Yeah. The management trust is designed to, um, to control all of those accounts. So it, it okay, controls so every one of those accounts. So it has, um, it's kind of like an escrow company. You can have multiple accounts or one account. Okay, but that let's say sense? for argument's sake, um, you go and you have a, have a real estate, uh, a real estate trust, and you go and you have the contract trust as the management company. You go now. You already own your home, so you put that into the real estate trust, and you decide you're going to, going to buy a second home. You're going to snowbird it. So you buy the second home. Do you put that home in your name? Do you put that home in the name of the trust, and thus have them pay? for the home, or how exactly do you work that? The home would go in the name of the, it would go in the trust. So the name would be uh, you as trustee, but the trust would own the home. Let's call it ABC Trust. So ABC Trust okay. would, would contract to buy the home. Now, 
Sometimes you're going to have to do that in your name and say, and or assign, and then just assign it to the trust. Because when you go in to buy this from a realtor, and the bankers, they're not going to understand this stuff. So you just do and or assign. So when you sign the earnest money, put your name and or assign. At the time of closing, you assign the note, the, the contract, to the trust. So now the property is going in the trust, and you're the trustee. And then from that day forward, you sign uh, your name, comma, trustee, comma, not as otherwise. That's a limiter. That tells them you're not the owner. You're just the trustee. You're managing this thing. So the deed would have the trust's name, not our name. Exactly. Okay. And I, I, I resented you using the ABC. I worked for them for 43 years, and I, you can't trust them. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, but they're, okay, so, so basically, like the contract trust that we just got is the management trust. And then any other things that we want to put in to be owned by the, owned by the or in the name of the trust with us as the trustees, would go into separate trust, and basically we own we own nothing, even though we do. Right. The only thing you own is certificates of beneficial interest for a future disbursement from the trust. That's all you own. Okay. It's kind of like uh, not even okay. like a stock certificate. It has no intrinsic okay. value. You can't go out and sell it. Like you can't stock. Right. So, and so, and so the bank accounts that we open on the management trust would be the payee to all of these other things. Yes, in a form, yes. So the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mother load creates the, the real estate trust, funds it, contracts between the real estate trust now and the management trust. So the money flowed to it. It wrote the check to pay for the house or the car, or the boat, or the plane. Oh. Does okay. that make sense? Like yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it, when things fall into a logical order, yeah, it, make, it makes a lot of sense. So now, even though I've, I've read a lot of the stuff that, that uh, you sent them that you put on uh, as PDFs and this and that and the other, it, it make, makes a lot more sense that way. Okay, yes. good, good. Because we're going to have to agree... We're going to, I'm going to do a, well, Carol's got the software, I think. We're going to build another uh, flow chart for all this. Um, and oh, we'll excellent. that on the website also. Excellent. Okay, thank you guys for your help. You bet. Thank you. Okay, we have another caller, Lynn and Linda. Lynn and Linda? Unmute yourself, please. Star six, Star six, unmute yourself. Yeah. Well, when Lynn and Linda figure out how to do that, we'll come back to this. There they are. No, not yet. Oh, there they are. Are you guys there? No, you, you muted yourself for, for, re, for real this time. Okay. All right, let's go somewhere else here. Pablo, are you there? Yes, I am. Carol? Oh, good. Welcome. Yes. Jim? How yep. are you guys doing? Good. Um, Charles. Yes, it's Charles. I just came in at my new, another new number. How are you guys doing? You were doing well. We're doing well. You're sneaking yeah. in on us, aren't you, Charles? Yeah. I, I snuck one in on you. Yeah, but your listen. telephone comes up as Pablo. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you better you better check that out. They must have reassigned the number. <laughs> it's a brand new number. But yeah. look here, I I had a couple of questions. Um, you partially answered one of them. So I have okay. Let's say I have the management trust set up to fund, and it's it's the contract trust to fund all my other trusts. So what kind of I don't need to have that much money always on hand in the money in, in the management trust, right? Because it's every time I get ready to do anything, do I uh, 
draw from the mother load, or do I keep a certain amount in there, or should it not be funded with a lot of money? Can you, and I, that, that's one part. I ask the other question after you answer this. Um, well, it, you can move money around, but it's best to, in my opinion, it's best to fund the real estate with enough to trust, the real estate trust with enough to carry it for 10 years. So if you know what the value of the house is, you know what, you know, put that money in there. And then you know what the tax is going to be, because you have to disclose that to you, put that money in there. You know about what the insurance is going to be, so put that money in there. You know that you've got certain things that have to be maintained, you know, air conditioning, puts us a little aside for some appliances, but the most of the appliance stuff like that, the income of the house are going to be private property. Anyway, they won't be part of the house property. But you could buy them with, with the uh, initial funding and uh, put enough money in there so you, you can carry that for at least 10 years. And that's what I'm doing. So, okay, that was uh, my, main, my main question because so we don't need to overfund. We, in other words, we need to budget what we're having to uh, manage and keep that amount in there with maybe a little extra, but not overload it beyond, well, way beyond what it will be managing is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, the average person lives in a house five and a half years. So I'm going to put uh, enough in for 10 years in my trust. When I do my real estate, it's going to be a 10-year project. And at the end of 10 years, um, I'll probably sell it, buy another one. Or I can um, borrow some more money to take care of it. You've got a mother of trust that will loan you money at a pretty good rate, and you can place mm -hmm. it in there. Okay. So, I think I got see, it. I think I got it. Uh -oh, you, you, tally up, you tally up what, what needs to be managed as far as the maintenance and everything on each transaction and contract that you have with um, each trust that you'll be contracting with and you fund the management uh, trust long term according to that. Exactly. Yeah, you want to set this up to where you don't have to worry about it. You know, what we're trying yeah. to do is make sure our lives, we're going to have so much going on in our lives that we need to do a little bit of planning. One of the things is to plan that out for 10 years each one of these projects, like your real estate or your boat, even a car. You know, I'm just moving one car out of my car trust and another car into my car trust this next week. And then I have to refund that trust. But I'm just moving, I'm using the same trust um, because it's sitting here. I mean, I moved, I got rid of one car, I got a new car. So it's funded. It's funded in advance. So when I borrowed the money from the mother of trust, which, is, which I have set up right now, I borrowed the money, and then I got a good rate. I mean, the guy that, that set the, the loan up for me was pretty good. He got me a pretty good rate. And then I uh, funded the, the trust again and then put this other car in there because there was no car in the trust. And then I allowed X amount of, dollars for maintenance, X amount of dollars for repairs, uh, insurance, incidentals, and these new tires. I got to buy some new tires for it. All that is in that, in, in that contract. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think, I think um, yeah, I understand now. It's more, a lot more clearer. That one is cleared up pretty good. This is the second one that I have. I caught the tail end of the of beginning of the call, a new, trust that you all have added and um my wife and i were talking this morning just this morning about i don't know whether this trust that you've added it will cover what we talked about but i want to get elaborated on it we are going to establish um long-term generational nursing facility for any of the elderly people in the family starting out we're going to build this facility and it will be employed with top-notch nurses, caregivers, everything that we need in there to take care of the patriarchs and matriarchs of the families and they get where they, of the age that they'll have to go to a nursing home, they will go to our personal one that we have already established. Um, can you tell me, um, I know I can go back and listen to the call, but the last, the trust that you mentioned, is that a trust that would cover that type of 
you know, thing that we want to do, or could you elaborate on how it should be done? Well, I think you've just figured it out. That's about what we're talking about. Yeah. So I'm going to read back through this paragraph real quick. It says, um, some folks have been gifted currency or zim. They have not planned for this, don't necessarily have any humanitarian goals, and likely to fish out of water. For that reason, we've created a family maintenance trust designed for those that do not have a lot of currency or zim, but hopefully they will have enough to care for their families for a while. It will allow for a small additional to the monthly income flow, purchase and maintenance of new home or car gifts or loans for family members on an individual basis. They still have access to our website, but the trustee's responsibility should be minimal. So, yes, exactly. Carol and I have been working on this for a little while. And I have a younger brother that is going to have to be taken care of. He's not real healthy. And um, I'm setting up an automobile for him and getting one all set up in a trust for him. And it's exactly the same thing. So we're in that same situation as you, and it's exactly what this will do for you. Okay, so so this facility that we would set up, let's say that it would house, it would be open for the cover over the amount of elder that we ha- elderly that we have in our family. And uh, each time one gets to the place where it's of nursing home age, they would go there. Um, it'd be top-notch all the way around because that particular trust will be, it'll have its own uh, way of generating funds because enough money would be there for that to happen to cause it to continue to operate generationally. It'll never be able to take it out of the family. It's something that'll be generation to generation that um, every time elderly gets old enough, they'll go there. You know, if they want to, if they don't, they have a place to go. So this trust that the new trust is that you just uh, mentioned would be the trust. I didn't get the whole whole of it at the beginning of the call. So this is the trust that would be right down in line in what we want we want to do. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. In fact, we'll okay. work with you on this to help us set it up better. Because you you given me a couple ideas I hadn't thought through yet. But yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I got it. I got it. Uh, all all everything will be. It would be a notch above what usually goes on from the governmental perspective. This would be top notch information. You know, you won't have to go through a lot of red tape, paper to get get them in there. But it'll be established at a certain point in their life, at a certain age, they qualify to go in that facility. And families, it'd be big enough for families to come visit if they had to stay there. Uh, they could stay there with their loved ones and at the same time watch the uh, top-notch uh, care that they're, they're given, you know, so their latter days, you know, would be their best days. That's what we're right, so considering. Ba- mm-hmm. So basically, Pablo, what you're creating there <laughs> is a, a, uh, um, a um, oh, I lost the word, darn it, um, hospice. It's a pre-hospice because when my dad was in hospice, there was a place for me to go stay if I wanted to stay there for two, three days at a time and just to be around him and you know, spend time with him. So it would be kind of like a pre-hospice because it's not going to be a hospice. They're not, you're yeah. not sending him there to die. You're sending him there to retire. So right. you'll have a place like, like little efficiency apartments that were built around this place for, you, for your family to stay for three, four, there five, ten go. days. Right. Okay. Well, they could stay as long as they want to stay. Yeah, yeah, they could stay as long as they want. Cause everybody won't be in the condition of getting ready to die. It'll just be that it'll take pressure off the immediate family. Mm-hmm. Because usually they have to take them in or they have to send them to a nursing facility uh, when they lose a lot of control. That, that was my main. But I got where you're coming from. Yeah, it just yeah. opened up some more things since you told me what you just told me. Yeah, yeah I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll keep in touch on that, Pablo, and we'll see what we can come up with. You know, that's going to be your new nickname for me if ever from now on. I'm going to call you exactly. Pablo. Exactly. <laughs> well, I got to work on changing my name. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But good, good, uh, good, good uh, program. A lot of good information coming out. Even though you say you're not on point, both of you are still on point because you got what's needed before this RV. 
Thank you yeah, so much. Well, well, thank, we try hard. Thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. That's appreciate nice. it. Good talking to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice bye. day. Okay. Let's try Lynn and Linda again. You came back. Let's see well, if we finally can... figured oh, out. I hear somebody. How to there we go. Myself. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's actually just Linda. I don't know where the Lynn came from. Um, okay. I actually have several questions. My my audio quality was not good, and I cannot understand when you website. I can't understand what you're saying that the website is. That you've mentioned hmm. a few times. Um, I was so wondering what was, what was I'm, it, so what what are you having? You're having a, a is it a dissonance where you, you're not understanding the words? No, uh, the lady who's speaking, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. I can understand Carol? the gentleman a lot, a lot clear, yes. But when you speak, it's, it's just not clear to me when you speak. And I don't know why, but the gentleman is more clear. And so when you gave the website at the beginning, I couldn't understand what you were saying. I just wanted it repeated. Oh, oh. oh. www.indicator, that's I-N-D-I-C-A-T-O-R, information, dot com Infor- information information okay dot com and okay. you can and then, you can okay re- you can listen to calls and IQD calls um, so now you're breaking out yeah. yeah and uh yeah there is yeah, a little bit of a, of a echo on on Carol's phone I have to admit yeah, yeah. Oh, okay sorry um, Okay, as far as my questions, um, okay, so we know that the, that the IRS is going away, it hasn't already, so shouldn't we wait until the wealth managers of this world understand that there's no IRS to set up our trust? Will it make a difference? Uh, like if, if there is no common law attorney where you live, I live in a small town and I live like 120 miles from the nearest what would be called a city, a small city. So I really doubt there's a common law attorney there or a wealth manager that would have a clue what I'm talking about or what you're talking about. So I was wondering well, if we, when we, get our, when we get our lump sum, should we just park it somewhere for a few months till, till the dust settles and we can kind of figure out who knows what? I want I to is, say that... Uh, there's a more people that are aware of the common law than we understand. I, the, attorneys, you know, they don't understand half what they do. They really don't. Um, I've got lots of attorneys. Anyway, um, they all go by, you know, um, court cases and, you know, the book of rules and this, that, and the other thing. We all know it. That's just garbage. I think that you're going to find that it's going to be a very quick changeover from the statutory admiralty maritime straight into common law. And I think that they're going to jump into that thing. I think they already started. Um, I do know that they have courses out now for attorneys. Um, uh, they're private, but I know each. Because people know that we're going that direction. I mean, not everybody. I mean, uh, I'd say 20% of the population is aware that we're going to go through the a huge change. Uh, it's only about four or five percent, even know what we're talking about as far as the RV and stuff. Yeah. But I would say that's up to you whether you want to wait. I'm going to jump in and teach. I'm going to be getting in their face about, okay, well, why are you doing it that way? That's not how it works. This is the way it works. And mm-hmm. you know, because you have to push these people along. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like right now. There's a couple yeah. of companies that just made a huge error, and all of a sudden they've been boycotted. I believe it was Delta. Yeah. Last weekend, I had to cancel 100 flights. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. The power of the wallet, folks, the power of the wallet, that's where the power is at. When you stop buying their products, they listen. Yeah. So. Well, I live live in Texas, and I have Google looking for a common law attorney and have not really been able to find uh, anything. and that, that's why I ask, okay, how long is it going to take? And do also because I'm in a small town, I, our bank is small, locally owned. 
Um, I kind of doubt we have a wealth manager. We do have some wealthy farmers in the county, but I've never heard of a wealth manager at our bank, but maybe we do. So what if if we don't have one, then, you know, what's, a, what's my next step? Just drive to that big city and... And try to, you know, ahead of time, try to make an appointment with one at a large bank. Uh, you know, we've been told don't trust the banks, don't trust the banks, and I just, I feel like I want to wait till the the QFS is fully installed and everybody knows it, and I know my money's safe. I, I, I'm a I'm a hide my money under the mattress lady is what I am, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not and I'm not kidding. I did buy a safe, but I'm not kidding. I, I've never kept much money in the bank. So um, yeah, well. You know, we're we're two birds of a feather there. Trust me on that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, well, I, here's what I would say, Linda. I think that what we're going to see is when you go, you're going to have to go exchange someplace. So when you go to that exchange center, they're going to have some of these questions will be answers. They'll have the facts there. They'll know what's going on, and they'll be able to help guide you and. You may have to go to a big city to initiate your contact with the wealth manager, but after that, you can do it pretty much from your home. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't have to get a secure Internet system, but you could do a lot of it that way. (laughs) Well, I I barely have – I have less than one – what is it? Uh, MBPS, I have 0.7. So I, I really wow. have very poor in it. I'm really, really hoping for the Starlink to kick in. Because, and I've got the app on my phone. I check it about once a week, but so far I don't have coverage even from that. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, I can't really download much at all uh, uh, on my computer. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this, all this new change. So that I, And I'm only like two miles from my little town, but, but still I just can't get anything. Um, so now... It's not the wealth managers, though, that help you set up the uh, trust, is it? Is that to you no, go to the common law attorney? That's what form? we do. That's what we do. We set up the oh. trust. So we can do that long distance then? Oh, yeah. yeah. We okay. have, uh, it, we have a, our main website, which is a members-only website, indicatorinformation.com. You can go and see uh-huh. some stuff there, but it's only for the members. The members are our people okay. that own the trust. So we also okay. have the application is on a separate website. There's a link to it from the main website. It's 3itrustapp.com. You go there and you pick what type of trust you want. You probably want to start with a standard trust, a mother load trust, and then get that set up. And then what you do is you fill out the application. It's electronically passed over to us. We process the trust. We build the trust. It takes uh, two, three, four days before we can get it in the queue. We're you know, pretty busy right now, but we're moving fast. And then once the trust is done, um, it's in a binder. We ship it in a box. There's little tags to show you where to sign, little tags to show you what has to be notarized. Okay. Now, you're, you're guided okay. through the whole thing. And then okay. you'll yeah. have the, the trust itself, all the minutes to establish the trust, and then you have to get it notarized. There's three places to get it notarized. You're notarizing the signature. You're not notarizing the trust. Okay, you're notarizing the signature. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, and we use $21, 21 lawful dollars, uh, which is exchanged to get the certificates. You have to supply that. Usually what we use is, is a, um, um, uh, um, oh, be careful. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the silver certificate. Money order? Silver certificate. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So we get the oh. silver certificates. We suggest that. That's evidence to the court that you try to pay with real money, not currency, and you can buy those at a coin store, or you can get them online um, at eBay or things like that. I, yeah, I have to. I have to do everything online. I mean, really, we don't have any any facilities here to. Yeah, to buy so you can order that, yeah. and, uh, and then okay. Um, once it's notarized, it's activated. Okay. And okay. You can open so an account with it. No, yeah, I have a very small farm, 80 acres. And I have put the farm into a living trust, okay? Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's not common law. So nope. can I dissolve that trust and start over, or what would be the best way to do that? 
You can because I am, I am going to change. I am going to change the beneficiaries a lot in this anyway. I need to make major changes to it with this wealth. I need to add some more people. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. I am going to make major changes. And so, is that possible to just dissolve that trust and then start over with a new trust for the uh, family form? You can, you can, or you can have that um, that trust, that revocable trust. Uh, actually fund the irrevocable. In other words, you can move the assets into it and be gifted over. How, we, can, we can figure out how to do that for you. Uh, probably ah. best, though, is just to sign it over, you know, sign it directly over to mm-hmm. the new one. And okay. uh, we'll sign work the, with sign the whole, sign, the, sign the whole trust. Code. Okay, that's good. Okay, so let me see if yeah. I have any other questions. Uh, so what I'd have to do is I'd have to see a copy of the existing trust to see how to do that. And, of course, I'm not an attorney, but I have experience in doing this stuff. And I can, you know, I know how to read. Sure. (laughs) I can read this thing, and I can give you an idea how this thing works. Yeah. Um, But I'm not trying to take you. Well, I actually have it on my computer, and I can just email it. I wouldn't even have to mail you a copy of it. Okay. So, let me think. I'm just checking real quick, Steve. Okay. So, I will check on your website. Um. And get that all thought. This is really good. I'll be in touch with y'all later. Okay, now, now just one Linda, more thing. Uh, yes. Linda, at the end of the call, I'm going to give my information how to get a hold of me. So you can, uh-huh. you'll have my email address. I'll put it out and my phone number so you can okay. call me direct and okay. get this thing taken care of. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, earlier you were talking about a revocable trust, uh, you know, to protect your assets. But I wasn't sure if you were talking, because we have heard about the 80% and 20%. Um, is this revocable trust for the 80% or the 20% or a trust for each or a lump them up? How does that work? Well, no, we don't do revocables. We do irrevocables. Yes. So I wrote down revocable. Okay. okay. Everything's irrevocable. Okay. Once it's in there, it's in there. See, we're trying to get the ownership away from you so it can protect the asset for your for your family. So if it's a revocable, yeah. you know, the court can order you to take it out of the trust and give it to somebody else yeah. if you're sued. Well, we don't okay. want that. Okay, so, so, um, okay. So back, back to my question, is it is it one for each pile of money or you know, separate ones or they both in the no. same? So would I need no, two you, trusts? No, you just need a trust to start with. And then okay. once you build your, your – we call it the mother load trust. This is the one that you can set up that the bank's going to – uh, be able to co-manage with you. They don't have any ownership. And when I say co-manage, the money's in that trust. It's going to be at the bank or in the wallet. If we go to QFS, it'll be in the wallet. And all, all the bank can do is offer services. They don't have control over money. And See, that's, that's where what I'm I think we're going to be <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. Leaning, so it, I'm leaning to what, waiting for the QFS myself. Yep, yeah. Me too. But in the interim... Yeah. So they would be there, and then you would physically go to the bank every time you wanted to move something from the mother load trust. For example, if you want to start a real estate trust, the, if you have the mother load trust set up, it would be the creator of the real estate trust, and then it would fund the real estate trust or a car trust or a boat trust or a farm trust or a ranch trust, whatever you want to call it. We can do that. So it's a simple process. If you have your mother of trust, that's where all your money is sitting, and then it will fund a trust by creating the trust and then puts the money in there for the real estate. Then we have the management trust that manages all your banking for you. Okay. So we'll sit down with now, you. You'll call me on the phone, and we'll go yeah. through this in detail. Yeah, yeah. I do have a question about the appointment. Um, I've read on some websites that at the appointment that they will – if we want them to, or maybe if we don't want them to, set up trusts for us, I assume those are common law trusts, and those are okay No, they're to not. Do? They're statutory no. trusts, and they'll set up there, and they will be the, the, your partners in that trust, and that's not a good thing. When you go to the, to, the, um, to the exchange, you want to have your trust already set up and ready to go with an EI number. And then you take the trust, oh. and you probably need the abstract of trust, but take it with you in, in this case, and you have the abstract of trust, Shows you have an EI number. They'll open the bank account in that number. That is the trust account. They don't own it. They can't control it. It's irrevocable. It's yours. So well, I'm, so Monday morning, Monday morning, I need to get on your website or call you and, and say, 
how can I get a real quick trust done? Because, you know, if we make start making appointments Monday, I need to have that in my hand before I go to my appointment, right? Well, uh, yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no, let me explain. Uh, you don't have to have the physical trust in your hand, but you do need yeah. to have the abstract of trust and a copy of the CP575 notice, which is a declaration from the Internal Revenue Service that they have issued you a EI number, employee identification number. Those two things are the only thing you need to really open an account. And we can get that email to you the moment that we get the EI number done. I can email that to you. And I can also, worst case scenario, I could email you the trust in case you need it if I can't get it shipped to you in time. So this EI number is is different than any other EI number we've ever had because I may already have one. Nope, you won't, because you need a specific one for an irrevocable trust. Okay. So so when you do the application, you're going to give us your name and your social security number. Now, let me tell you up front, folks, don't worry about that. It goes into our computer. It's the only place it goes. We use DOD, Department of Defense 7, compliance uh, encryption software on our computers. Nobody will ever see it. So, and... When I walk away after 15 minutes, my computer, it all shuts itself down automatically if I forget to turn it off. So nobody can ever get in. And the password yeah. is onerous to get into it. <laughs> nobody knows what it means. So how long does it generally take to get this EI number from the IRS? I do it. At, uh, they're open Monday through Friday, about 7 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, my time, and I can get it. In about five minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so tell me again. I'm sorry, my memory is very poor. So this abstract of trust, is that something I should contact you like Monday and say, can you do one of these and get my EI number, and then I'll be ready to go to the appointment? Well, it could be, yeah. Well, just give me a call over the weekend if you want. I'm going to be in and out. Okay. But I this weekend, I'm going to allow everybody to call me because I'm I'm – we, we're close. We don't normally work weekends, yeah. but we're working yeah. weekends. So I'm okay. going to do a trust here in a few minutes when I get off the phone. And So just okay. give me a call. I'll put it out there, and folks, give me a call. And, uh, and what number do we use for that? Pardon me? What number do we use to call you? Okay, I'll give it to you right now. Uh, it's 503 and that and middle digit was house, 583? Yeah. 583. Okay. Okay, yeah, 503-583-6791. Okay, got it. Okay, and so I can call this weekend and do that. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I, uh, I can't get the EI number. Yeah. Okay, Lynn, okay. I cannot get the EI number on the weekends. I can get it Monday morning, but that's the right. earliest. Right, right, so, right. Okay. I understand. Okay. okay, all right, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate this. Thank you, Linda. Take care. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Cynthia, what's on your mind today? What's on? Hello. Thank you for everything Hi. that you do. So glad I met you. Did you get your pills, Jim? Mm. Did they show I up? got them last night. I got them last Yay. night. Okay, yep. good. Um, all right, this is a simple question, but I'm serious. Um, when I go through all the information in my trust and I read about, you know, I'm getting ready for the appointment and all those things, and it's suggesting um, that we open accounts in Chase, Bank of America, HSBC, Wells Fargo, and my immediate question is, because we know that the One World Government, the Illuminati, and the Cabal uh, it's the families, it's those families that are involved in that that are all the owners of these particular banking institutions. So that Absolutely. seems like an oxymoron to me. Like, is our, is our money that we're going to put in that trust really safe with Chase or with Bank of America? We know that many of our corrupt Congress people and senators own stock in Bank of America. It's one of their wealth sources well in my opinion 
It's just my opinion, folks. In my opinion, when we get ready to go and we are told to go exchange, this will, will have already changed behind the scenes. We won't even know it, but they will not be able to, to take our money. Uh, I mean, they'll exchange for us, but they won't be able to steal our money, put it that way. I think that we're going to be okay. I don't think that uh, the powers that be will let us go through all of this until we're ready. And I had said last fall that we wouldn't see it until this spring because the banking system was not ready. And I think that it's ready now. I'm seeing a lot of things out there, little hints here and there that we're there and that the banking system is going to be secure. Good. And, um, so you know, think, I, I think, think that Trump uh, has been getting that done, maybe? Well, it's being done right now. I mean, um, I don't want to get too wild and crazy on the phone here. I want to be known yeah. as one of those okay. right-wing wackos, yeah. although I am one. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I don't mind being considered that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can wear it with black it's a badge of honor these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I live in... Well, um, I live in in Oregon, where it's just nuts here, yes, I mean, it's crazy. Yes, I was a Californian. No longer, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that was one question. And then listening to the different questions regarding the mother load trust, the management trust, am I correct that during the, the first contract, which I did, which is the mother load trust, um, is the next step to do the management trust? Is, is that something that you need to have in place prior to everything, or um, I don't have anything no. to manage yet? But you know, no, you don't. You don't have to have it. It just makes it easier. The reason we created this is because we know that we're going to have multiple residences and multiple cars, and we have multiple businesses, and we're going to have multiple this, multiple that, and um, we want one central entity to manage all of our money. We only want to have one company, one entity right. that's writing the checks. That. Now, that can have multiple accounts. For example, the management can have an account designated just for one house, or another account designated for the next house, another account uh, set for a car, or it can have one. Just it, Think of it like an escrow company. You know, right. When you write your, your check to the bank or your bank takes the money every month, that check it's going to pay your pro, your pro rates on your insurance and your taxes and the principal and the interest. It's just right. one account. So, but it does all of that. So we can do the same thing with a management trust. It can be like an escrow company. Yeah, so when the money exactly. comes in, it can write the check for, you know, utilities on the house. Uh, the, you, know, you probably won't have a payment, but you're going to have utilities. You're going to have taxes. Until it gets, gets resolved, you're gonna have a few other incidentals. Right. You can do that. You can get an EI number for the real estate trust and do it individually. Then you'd have to have an EI number for an automobile trust, an EI number for this trust, an EI number for that trust. I guess very tenuous. So we thought. Yeah, I'd rather have just the one. I mean, it's okay to have the mm-hmm. one and the mother yep. load, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, you my, have the uh, one load trust question. and the management trust. Both have to have an EI number. No other okay. trust really requires one unless they need okay. a bank account. All right. And now um, regarding, like, we have a will, and I'm wondering, um, it sounds like since the, uh, the trust avoids probate and inheritance tax and everything, that maybe does the trust replace the will? No. We have a package called a triple play, and that has a pour over will, it has, and what that is, the pour over will is anything that's not already in trust upon your demise is automatically put in trust for you. We have the medical directive, and then we have a power of attorney. There's a call a triple play. You've got three things. You have it for a husband and wife or just a single individual. And they started, what's the price in that, Carol? 275 for a single and 350 for a couple. Yeah. So what we've done is we have this as a package that works right with the trust. It's not necessary, but it's highly recommended. So what happens upon an untimely demise, an accident, for example, and you had planned on moving some stuff around some trust, and your people know this, because you're taking copious notes and it's in the trust book, right, folks? <laughs> and then the poor of a will, will finish the job for you. Okay. 
I do take notes. I'm just so thankful for both of you. Yeah. Um, well, my okay, point that's... on the notes, part, just a minute here. My point on the notes is just to make a point again to everybody that if you don't write down all of your wishes and wants in a piece of paper with the trust and keep with the trust, how is your successors going to implement everything you wanted to have done? So I'm using, I'm segueing over to that just to make that point again. Yeah. So back to you. Go ahead. Uh, I, um, I met with someone. Now, when I was reading it regarding there might be various levels, um, if, if there were some things that you were wanting to do that were going to help out society, basically those 15 things that are listed, and I definitely have, uh, I've, got one, I've got up to three um, things that I want to do ministry-wise. So I met with the leader of uh, a homeless ministry that I'm involved with. I cooked for them, and I did not give him much information. I just said that we had been, there was a possibility that something. So it sounds like before I would go to my appointment, I felt like, okay, I kind of need to, do I need to have like 501c3 documentation? for these various humanitarian causes that I want to, uh, to do charitable trust for, to take? No. No, because no. Okay. I don't think the IRS is going to be here. And a 501c3 is just simply making you tax-free from, the, from as Jay used to call it, the virus. He was talking, he called yeah. the IRS the virus. You know? And they are like a virus. And right. um, so I don't think you're going to need that. You will probably have okay. to have some nomenclature on something to say that the intent of this entity, this trust, is to benefit humanity and is, is, is an, it's going to be not used for any profit. All uh, money will be flowed out to you know, whatever. You, you write your own thing, yeah. your own story on that. I don't think you have to worry about that. Okay, and well, we, it sounds you know, like, you know, what you put in the um – what you put in the notebook and everything and talking about Trump lining up those 15 uh, things that would possibly in, increase yeah. the amount that you would be um, the RV for you, um, that's what got me thinking about that. I'm like, well, th- some of these things apply to what's on my heart to share with other people. Um, well, whatever you need to do, we can get done. Uh, as far mm-hmm. as the paperwork, the the personal goals that you have are, you know, I like. Uh, we can work with you on trying to structure your all of your trust to come to that end. It's just a matter of linking them together with contracts and resolutions. And, but you know, I don't the, need to have that ready. I would just basically go to my appointment, yeah. explain about the different things that I am wanting to do, and without right. having to have everything ready to set it up at that point. Well, I don't know. I've heard it both ways. I think what's going to happen is you're going to go to the appointment, and they're going to say, okay, here's the amount of currency that you have, and this is the base amount. Now, you're going to go to another appointment, and then you're going to tell them what you want to do, and they'll increase the value of that according to what you want to do. That's what I see happening. That's what I've been hearing is going to happen. Okay. That's a secondary appointment then. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes it easier because I, this one person I really, really trust, and I gave him very minimal information, and I don't want to talk to the other people yet because I'm still yep. researching myself. Yep. So, okay, thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Cynthia. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, good. Mark, Here we go. you're up next. I'm I'm back again. Uh, um, a couple a couple of things that I didn't think about before. With the when you cash in the dinar, okay, or you go go to see your your wealth banker and this and that and the other, and you get everything changed over. How how does how does the new banking system and everything work in regard to that? Because obviously now you can't. The FDIC doesn't insure more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars in an account, and you've got, I guess, things like Fidelity brokerage accounts and this and that and the other that you could put money into, and I guess put that into the trust. But how exactly do you work out that aspect of it and make sure that 
not only is it protected by the trust, but it's in some kind of uh, an institution where it's not just sitting there waiting for withdrawal, but earning whatever it's earning. Well, we don't know yet. I love my saying, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know exactly what they're going to do. We feel that, and I've been hearing that, um, when you exchange your currency into the bank, it should be in a quantum financial system account. And if that's true, then there's no way they can steal it. Part of the financial system... So then there's no reason for an FDIC or anything? No. So the, the quantum financial system, if it works the way I'm hearing and reading, is you'll actually have just like a cryptocurrency wallet. And the, the wallet will have all of your funds in there. You'd control it. And then they would, you know, allow you to do certain things with like exchange in and out of it, and they'll give you all the higher rates. That's what we're hearing and seeing. We don't know for sure yet. Okay, so then in other words, if you've got, for argument's sake, like our retirement accounts and this and that and the other, um, you, it would be wise to take that out of a brokerage house and also put that into the, into the quantum with the, uh, and into the trust with the rest of the money. Um, I don't know. Right now, I think that the, the whole world is going to go quantum. That's why they put okay. 60. Right. I don't know if you people know, they put 61 satellites in orbit around the Earth this last month. 61 satellites. And there's been three or four of them out, fell out of, not of those, but three or four satellites have come out of the sky, especially over Oregon. We've seen two of them come down. Yeah. They burst into a ball of flame. It looks like a meteor shower. So I know that that's true because it's in mainstream media. I mean, they're talking about it. There's nothing of this in the, in the uh, you know, our websites, but they're talking about it. Well, some of those might have also been... Some of those might have been the Mossad ones that they shot down, allegedly. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to say it that way, but thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> for, me, for me, you can get the factual news as opposed to the, the fake news. But, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. So, so basically, we're not sure exactly how it's going to work, but on the quantum system, it should be 100% safe. It, it should be. And I think that that's why it's taken so long. And I, like I've said before, we're, we weren't going to have this until that was set up, and I didn't see it before the first end of the first quarter of 2021, and it's still not here. And I don't know if it'll be done right away, but I think it's close, very, very close. Yes. I'm yes. seeing things that lead, lead me to believe that we are on getting that that quantum financial system ready for the public. Okay. Now the other question that I had is kind of off topic, but on topic. Uh, for a while now, because there are things that we wanted to do to aid others also, we were looking to buy Zims, can't find anywhere to buy Zims, and because of research that I've done, saw that obviously the Zim went defunct in 2008, what, and I heard about the Zim bonds, what is, if, do you know anywhere where you can get the Zim, and what is the proper thing that you should be buying? The Zim bonds, the, the old notes, what, you know, the pile of rocks? Well, yeah. Now, in my opinion, from what I've read and have learned, as I bought a lot of Zim, I have, uh, if it starts, if the serial number starts with an AA or an AB, that's a bond. That, as far as okay. I know, is the only currency, Zim currency, that's going to be worth anything uh if it doesn't have okay. a, if it's not a bond don't buy it uh you can get them um i don't know if kevin's taking any new customers but you can always drop a little note into cheapest dot com is the guy that owns is kevin i've known the guy for quite some time he's been pretty good to me uh bought a lot of my currency there um i know he has them so okay, I, okay. so cheapest denar kevin yeah. Um, Cheapest dinar, that's Kevin, and uh, AA or AB. Right. Let me just a second here. Mm -hmm. I'll pull this up. Pardon my ticking in the background, folks. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to pull it up so I can give you his phone number. And um, let's see. Mm, there it is. And. He 
says he still has them. Okay, his number is 855 780. 780. Yeah, 1083. 1083, that's 855-780-1083. Yeah, and uh, tell him Jim Knox uh, referred you. I don't get any spiff on it, folks. I'm not making any money, but I'll tell you what. Uh, i got a great relationship with the man. So uh, my name will pull a little bit of weight in as much as he'll know that, you know, you're coming from a, a source that he trusts. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I appreciate right. your help again. Thank you. All right, you bet. And and when are you when are you moving? <laughs> uh, I, I was supposed to be out here about the end of the month, but it may be about the first or second week of next month. I made a I made a stupid decision last week and bought a vehicle, and that I thought had a minor issue that I could you know use real well, and it was really low priced. Now I know why it's low price. I have to replace the engine, so that's why I'm a little banged up today. I've been in the process working the mechanics. We're replacing an engine in a Ranger. <laughs> oh, God. Feel I better. Know, I'm I'm nice men. So. Well, you see, if it, had, if it had revalued already, you could have somebody do that for you. Oh, yeah, I know. I, 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 one of those deals. <laughs> okay, stay safe. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Right. Well, Jim, it is uh, 217. We still can have, I don't know, half a dozen callers. You want to keep going? Sure. Okay. All right. Susan, you're next. Susan? Hello, Susan. Oh, you just muted yourself? Let me unmute you. Then real. Okay, Susan, are you there? No, you keep going away, Susan. So, you're if you want oh, to unmute. Oh, okay, there you go. Touch. Muting myself, unmuting myself. So I guess you were unmuting. There you go. So, you all did a fantastic job. I want to compliment all of you on your goals in life and your where It seems like we're together for a reason, you know. Um, you're all on the same page, and I just appreciate all of you that have asked these questions. And, of course, Jim and Carol, I appreciate you very much. Um, so I think you answered a lot of my questions, but, um, you know, there are some unknowns as far as what I don't get. We d- I did purchase two trusts from you, and I'm not sure which is the mo- – is, did I purchase a mother load trust, okay? So – I'm not, you use the word management trust, mother load trust, contract trust. Are they synonymous? I, I'm getting confused with that. So. <laughs> well, they're all um, contract trusts. Every single one is a contract trust. The first one you purchase that has all of your currency in it is the mother load. Okay. The mother load is the one that will create and fund additional trust and create and fund the ma- initially fund the management trust. And I believe, Susan, that's what you purchased from us was the mother load and the management trust. I don't recall the names of either one of them, uh, but uh, I'm sure that we delineated it in the trust. I wasn't sure about that. All right. And another question I had, which you answered, how do you find a wealth manager and someone you can trust? No pun intended. <laughs> and that seems to be seen, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, um, we're stuck between a rock and a hard spot because we don't know who to trust until we vet them ourselves. And right. um, uh, I don't know. Right. No, I understand that. And how many individual trusts would you recommend um, that we have, you know, baseline? Uh, well, I've got 11. <laughs> so I don't know if I recommend 11. But uh, I do quite a bit of stuff. I own multiple entities. I do, you know, I don't just do this. I, you know, I have interest in websites and that kind of a business. So I have other things going on. But... Um, you need one for an automobile. You need one for a, your real estate. You'll need one to be the mother load trust. If you can have more than one or two pieces of property, you need to have probably a management trust. You want to make sure that you have all your affairs in order so you 
probably should have it to the triple play in case, you know, untimely demise, a uh, car accident or something like this. And uh, then you probably will be looking at maybe in the future some type of a charitable, it won't be a charitable trust, but a char- charitable entity that you can connect to the trust. So, uh, because I don't think we're going to have the 501c3 issue coming up anymore. I think that's going to be going away. That's, so you that know, it's whatever you, you need. Pardon me? Charitable, charitable entity trust well, or whatever we, would be a separate yeah. thing? Well, okay. it would be. See, as it stands right now, you have a 501c3, C8, C5. I don't know. what. You know, it depends on what you're doing. Right. There's different nomenclature for what you want to do. So if you want to take in money and use the money to benefit other people, for an example, you don't want to have to pay taxes on that money. So the IRS gives you the option to qualify your entity as a nonprofit. Well, if the IRS goes away, which we strongly believe it is going to go away, then I'm going to say you need a charitable entity because you don't have to go through all the qualifications. You just have to have a statement of intent this public and uh, help people. That's the whole idea why we're here. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, exactly. Um, is there any way, I mean, Pablo, <laughs> I loved your idea, you know, to share some of these ideas. We all have ideas of how we want to help humanity and our families. I, I just love it, you know, and I, I feel like going back, I'm new to this group and I feel like going back and listening to all these calls but is there any way that someone would could you know establish like a some sort of a document that ideas of what people are planning to do well I thought about that and I, I have the ability and the knowledge and how to put that type of a website together I'm just not so sure that I want to do it because you know, there's so many little vile critters running around here that call themselves human beings that want to make everybody's life visible because they got a keyboard in front of them. And yeah. uh, we could put together a forum, software, a I forum. have a software, a forum where you could just log in, make your comments, and seek some, you know, and say, anybody else have a better idea? And then you know, they would know who you were. And then, you know, they could email you directly or they could make a comment back in the forum. And we we yeah, didn't like really want to do anything like that, but right, like we, you know, we want to post our view. Go ahead. Yes, yes, but I I just think like we're trying in the Chicagoland area to get people you know that are on the same page. It's hard because this is in the state that you know <laughs> there's a lot of people, <laughs> right, Judy Keller, <laughs> and uh, it's difficult. It really is. So like-minded people. I mean, maybe some of you that are on the call are in the Chicago land area because we want to actually meet person, you know, person to person, and even if it's out of state, when we get to travel more freely, you know, we want to be part of community and help each other, you know. So, a form. Well, there's got to be a way to do it, and you know, there's mm-hmm. there's ways with computers. Um, I'm hoping that once we get um, the social media companies, you know, that uh, uh, Clarence Thomas did a great job you know, last week saying that you know. These people do not have the right to uh, do what they're doing with, with uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, mm-hmm. Google. They don't have the right to do this. And Clarence Thomas is very clear about that. And I think that they're going to become a public um, enterprise or a public entity. And uh, we'll just wipe them out. I mean, just get rid of the upper management, take them over. And they've already broke the law so much. And they've proven that they're not responsible enough to be uh, running this show. And if he decides to push that, which I think the Supreme Court's going to come out with something shortly, that's going to give those people in power, you know, not who's in the office, but the people truly in power, mm-hmm. um, you know what I'm saying, uh, yeah. uh, the yeah. opportunities to just go in and take them over and make them what they really truly were supposed to be is just a forum for us to voice and vent our frustrations and our, our opinions and seek camaraderie rather than have somebody controlling us because of our political beliefs. That's right. got to come to an end. Right. And it will. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, 
I don't want to go into the political stuff because it gets really mm-hmm. crazy, and I have my opinions, and everybody else got their opinions, and you know, we'll leave it at okay. that. Okay. Anything else, Susan? No, I think you answered a lot. Everybody was asking great questions, and those were my questions as I was writing them down. So I appreciate this. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Our next caller is from Ogden, Utah. Oh, I just missed it. I just lost it. Hmm. What happened here? Well, was ever from Ogden, please call back because I just, lost you somehow. Uh, Charles, it looks like you're up next. Okay, I'm back again. I have another question that uh, from time to time we've discussed, but I hadn't heard it in a while, uh, that when we go in and do our, ex- our, our exchanges, that once our um, account uh, numbers have been established and we've finished our business, tell them that you want another account number. Can you elaborate on that subject just a little bit, quick shot. Why? Uh, Jim, we have that on our website, don't we? About opening a ca- account and closing it and opening another one? Yes. Yeah, I think we do. It's someplace in there. Um, yeah. I don't know exactly where it's at, but I can. it's in there. I remember putting it in there. I've loaded like 3,000 documents, so I can't remember exactly where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's in there, Charles. It, it explains it very, very well about uh, changing into one account and then opening another account, closing the first one. Because the banks have to, at this point anyway, have to report all new accounts, but they don't have to report interbank, interbank accounts. So the first one they have to report, the second one they don't. It just helps you hide your digital trail. Okay, that's what I needed. That's what I need to hide the digital okay. trail. Okay, I got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, it looks like our caller from Ogden is back. There we go. I didn't lose you this time. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Who's yeah. this? Oh, this is Michael Zimmerman. Oh, hi, Mike. How are you doing? Um, well, I'm tired. I've got lots of questions, so I don't know. I just last tried to ask a few is one. Not ask too many. That's a good still it's, about, it's about two thirty, so it's kind of keeping short. Okay. Okay, I try. Now I haven't done anything with the trust for a couple of years because nothing's happened, as far as I know. My mailbox address is no longer valid, and so I need to do something about that. And then I'm wondering. Is there, are there any examples of how to do these um, uh, sub-trusts, I guess you would call them, like a car and a house, how to write them? Is, are there examples of that on your website? Well, well what you have to do there. is fill in the application and we create the trust. Yeah, well, I got the trust, you know, I got the trust all set up, well, you got but the I don't have any sub trust I don't have any sub-trust, like for car. So what do do you do decide? Jim, do you want to take this? Yeah. um, Well, there's there's no such thing as a sub-trust. Each trust is individual. That's what we do. We create each trust for you. Yeah, I don't know what you'd call it, but you got the the mother load trust and the management trust, and then you got the trust for your car and your house, I guess. Right. Yep. They're all individual trusts. We create each one of them. Yeah, individual they're, trust, then, is yeah. a better word, mm-hmm. I guess. Right. Okay. They are. They're, but, they're, they're solely set up individually, and then you connect them by contract and resolution to do the job that you want them to do. You can't put a house and a car in the same trust. It's got to be a different type of trust. You can't put two cars in a trust. Well, you could, but I wouldn't do it. Um, because yeah, you well, but, but is there... Both cars. Yeah, but I don't... Is there an example where I can know how to write the trust for, say, for a house no, or a car? We no, we, we do the trust. We charge you. We build the trust for you. It's not... Oh, okay. Trust. Okay, it's, so that's the first one. 
the individual trusts are are separate, and you you charge us for that. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So when I when this happens. Are you people going to be available to help me write these individual trusts? Oh, yes. Yes, we're going to be around. Okay. No, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be Oh, okay. Working. I didn't know if you had a non-disclosure agreement where you couldn't talk to us or nothing. So I just oh, thought no. I'd check. Well, there will no. be, but we, we just won't be able to take certain words, but we'll still be able to take care of your, your trust needs for you. Okay. And then I have my the mailbox in Cheyenne, Wyoming was closed a long time ago. I've never yeah. set up a new one. And so you better do uh, it. where would I set one up? Okay. Hold on, yeah, Jim, uh, hold on, me, me. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, hold on, hold on. What we have on the website, on the main website, under tools, you go to the website, there's a, um, a tab that says tools. At the bottom, we have the 8822B form and a sample on how to fill it out. What that does for you is it takes and you send it to the IRS after you get your new address for your trust and it changes it automatically at the IRS office. I'll help you with that. We've got it on the website with all the samples on how to fill it out. So find out where you want to reharbor all of your trust, get that address, and then I'll help you with that form so you can get it to the IRS. That okay. way your domicile is current when you go to exchange. Because if your domicile is not current, you may have an issue. Yes. Yeah, well, I definitely need to do that. When It, it looks like it's real close, so I want to do everything if it looks like everything's going to go pretty quick. So I well, want to get that done. Jim, yeah, don't your, we have a list of, of mailboxes on the website? Yeah. It's uh, on, under tools. We have all the boxes there, all four of them, all, all okay. four locations. Okay. Okay. So you'll be around. I can ask questions when, before I do my, my exchange so, sure. and put them in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good because I didn't know if you uh, would be uh, – my account at the bank is invalid because I haven't done anything with it for over a year. So i got to do that, too, before no, all that happens. No, we'll open new accounts for you. They'll open new accounts for you. Oh, okay. Well, that's good, then. Well, we'll do it that way, then. Okay. Okay. I can't, I, okay, I can't do any of that stuff right now because I've got a car right. repair that's going to cost me a lot of money. So... Uh, but I want to do it as soon as I can. As soon as this happens, I'll just have to do something so that I can get all this stuff set up. We'll so, be around. Get hold of us. We'll okay. be there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll call you. And you're Jim Knox, right? Yes, I am. The original. Okay. <laughs> the one okay. and only, original Jim Knox. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Well, thank you, Mike. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Right. Bye. Good morning, Dom. Or good, good afternoon, morning, where you How are. You? Good afternoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I'm. Well, you know, I'm not in Connecticut now. I'm in Colorado. Don't forget. Oh. Okay. Didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. No. The reason I'm call. The reason I uh, wanted to call. I just got off the phone with a nice little update from Shelton, so maybe I don't know if you no, want to hear share. about it. No, please share whatever you can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, prosperity packages have been given the order to be delivered. Um, there were 41 bond groups that needed to be released in order to get paid out to get the 1% released. Once that 1% uh, is released, we should have immediately the um, uh, notifications for Tier 4B. Uh, This could happen as early as tomorrow night. It's all been confirmed by the Treasury as well as some top bankers. And that's about it. 
Well, that's wonderful news. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, no, I was on the phone with uh, Shelton for quite a while. He was asking me about the common law trust, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, interesting. He said, I, okay. I, he, he said uh, I'd like you to compare notes with me on that. I said, not a problem. I'll put you in touch with the powers to be. Great. Super. Look forward to it. Yeah. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yes, it is. And the, and the information is great. It's really good news. Maybe tomorrow. Wow. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. So, Thank you, Don. Uh, yeah, we're, we're extremely, extremely close. I just got off the phone with Zurich as well. Uh, Zurich at the moment is a complete zoo. Uh, even though there is, you know, very cautious with COVID out there. Mm-hmm. There are more people in Zurich uh, than ever before because of all this activity going on with these bonds. My goodness. Okay. So that's an indication that uh, we're a lot closer than we ever thought. That's why I was accentuating last night, you know, keep the faith, and things are going to be they're going to be okay. Jim, I heard, overheard you say something about the currency before. Uh, about you do know about the rules of five, right? Of the dims. Yes, I do. I do. The, the uh, first five. I don't. Get, well, the first five you're going to get. You, you most likely you'll get the IS rate available on that. After the after the five, it's going to be an ex, you know a scaled down compensation. You're lucky if you got quite a few of them. Is if the last one you're going to get the money that you paid for? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I Dom, okay. with, yes, Dom. Is that just yes, the hundred T's, or is that some of the smaller? I have some fifty T's and fifty B's. Is it just the hundred T's? Yeah, it's the, sa- it's the same. It's the same thing. You have to prorate Good. those at the hundred T situation. Uh, y- you know. Um, it really, the, the other ones are almost meaningless because I look at it this way, uh, Jim. For instance, yeah. even if you if you get 50, 50 cents on the dollar for the 100T note, that's $50 trillion. Yeah. <laughs> it's an yeah. astronomical figure, whatever. You may say the other ones, you can, you can, you know, put them on the wall and, and make a nice, uh, uh, a nice wallpaper, you know. <laughs> as a remembrance, but I you know I've, I've I've been advising some people that have, you know, a nice amount, and I told them I said, listen, you know what, this is the time for you to begin to perhaps start helping some people that you care about, and they could use it, okay? Because let's say if you give a fifty note to somebody, a fifty t note to somebody, you know what? It'll be perfect for that person. It's a blessing that you're going to give that person with one stipulation that they help other people as well as like you helping them. You see? Mm-hmm. Because you're, not, you, you're going to get peanuts for it, the extra one. I'm just saying the extra ones, okay? Uh, you're going to get peanuts for them, so you might as well bless somebody else. If they go on with one fifty notes, they may be able to get a hefty return on it. You know? Even even if they get eleven to thirty three million, uh, you know, I mean, we got to face it. When was the last time anybody ever received eleven or thirty three million dollars in their <laughs> bank account? <laughs> See? But again, the idea is, as I was accentuating at the meeting last night, is making sure that everybody just gets good professional advice in the money money management scheme, okay? People will look at the bankers nowadays. They still look at the bankers as a bunch of thieves. You know, they've done that for many years. Understand that's all well and good, but remember, the banking system is slowly changing for the better, for the clients, not so much for the bankers, Okay. So remember, the bankers work for you, 
That's why I was saying last night, we ought to be of the mindset that the money has to start working for us rather than us working for the money. Okay? So, Mm -hmm, yep. And we have to be diligent about it. You know, we don't have all the answers. You know, uh, we're not professional enough or experts enough to to have all the answers. So we do need outside help, folks. And there are people out there who can do that. And remember, they will work for you. You may think that you have to pay them. Hey, you know what? My uh, old lawyer used to say to me, and God rest his soul, he just passed on for, from covid he was over 80. He used to say to me all the time, pay and make them serve you, okay? In other words, seek professional advisors. Even if you have to pay them, you will have the money, but make sure that they give you the best return on your money or they help you secure the best return. It's your money. You control it, folks. On top of that, you got a trust over here that controls that, too. So remember, <laughs> you control everything. Don't be fooled by these people. And there's still a lot of them out there who try to fool you. But don't do that. Okay? So, but no, we are very close, folks. I can tell you this. I can tell you that by next week, uh, uh, a couple of my bond deals are going to be monetized. Okay? Mm-hmm. And... Which means, believe me, we're right next, okay? We're close. And uh, when I say the bond deals are getting monetized, not from the redemption, but these are either resellers or uh, flippers. What these guys do, they're not going to release the fund, their money that easy unless they know that the redemption is ready to go, Okay. I do know, I just got an indication, yes, that Tuesday is payday, okay, which means that by Tuesday, we ought to go in to make appointments, folks. It could be that we go in to be, you know, we could secure appointments by Monday. Tuesday, we could go in into banks and, and uh, start exchanging. Fantastic. So. That's great news, Sal. Thank you for sharing. Wow. So that's mm-hmm. it. Good. Uh, it's a okay, good turnout now. Great. I heard, yeah? It was right, a few thanks people again. from last yeah. night. Good. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Okay. Did, you, did you have a replay of your call or not? Did you I'm take sorry? it? No. I, uh, Jim Martin did a beautiful job in uh, doing a bullet, bullet points of what we did. Yeah, I saw that this morning. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, great. Yeah, and I sent that okay. out. Uh, I don't like to record calls because they float around. They, they, you never know where they're going to end up. <laughs> Good point. You Good know? point. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's so, see. Uh, Jim, we got a few more questions. Are you ready? Sure. Thank you. Jim? Okay. Yeah, Don, thank, thank you so much. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. Sharon, how are you doing today? Well, I've got four quick questions. Thank you for asking during my son Robert's and one of mine <laughs> to start mm-hmm. with. Uh, this is a multi-generational trust organization we have put together here in our family. Yeah, that's wonderful. So anyway, can I add, and I haven't listened to calls for a while. I've let my son do the details. But can we add more funds to this trust in a future generation? The lady I was helping last night, I think she got it done, got the application sent out, I believe. Yes, she uh, did. Yeah. yeah, okay. So she asked me, and I said, I don't know, but I'll ask it today. So if, if later on more money came in, or, or is it once this is it, this is it? Um, Jim, you want to answer that one? Well, it's kind of once it's done, it's done. But there are ways okay. that you can loan a trust certain funds, and it can repay back slowly with interest, or maybe the debt could be forgiven in the future, if you understand okay. what I'm trying to say. There okay. are ways okay. to do it. You just have to be very, very careful about how you do it. Okay. You have to have the right contract, the right documents, the right everything. You know, it's, it's iffy. Sometimes yeah. You it's might just consider getting another trust. 
That's what okay. I say. That sometimes the best way to do it is just buy another trust. You'll have the oh, cash, okay. and then you can link them together any way you want to do business. Okay, thank do. you for that. Now, how do I know if I check the bloodline clause in my own trust? It'll be on there. It'll be, there's a one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sharon's trust goes way, way back, and it wasn't an option yeah. at the time? And you, oh. did you get my uh, copy of the, mine was the old $10 thing. Did you get my copy? No, I, I didn't. Did? So you're the third, second or third person that's asked me that. No, I haven't gotten those copies. But, you know, I've been traveling, and okay. today, yesterday, when I got ready for this call, my computer was going crazy. So I, I don't know what's going on, but go ahead and send them okay. to me again. But the bloodline yeah. clause, Jim, is that on the website or not, or do I need to send her a copy of it? No, I would have to send her a copy of that. No big idea. Okay, so, so Sharon, remind me to do that when you send me the other stuff, and I'll send you that copy, okay? okay? Um, the thing you needed was a picture of the original one with the $10 and just a blank minute page or a specific mini no, minute no, page? No, 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 I need, no. I need the, the very first page. The preface, because it talks about the creator and the, and the money in there, and I need minute number one. Okay, minute number one. And, well, is, is that the page you're talking about that had the 10, well, I had the $10 bill stuck on it, but that page. Is yeah, that, that, the that page one you're... is minute number one. That's minute number one, but I also need the preface where it explains things and what's happening. So, okay. um, uh, I don't have the you know, you know, I'll get, no, Sharon? Yeah. I will go through a copy of that trust that I have. I don't have your trust, but I'll find out exactly where it is that I'm talking about, and I'll let you know. Okay, because I, the book's across the table at the moment. Now, a couple of other... Okay, no problem. Uh, what's the difference or function of a charitable trust versus that there is such a thing as a regular trust? Well, when I set all this up before Jim got involved with me, I set up a charitable trust, not necessarily to become a 501c3, and I agree with Jim that that, that entity is probably going to go away anyway. But let's say you have, this, I'm just taking numbers out of the air, let's say you have $50 million that you got out of the exchange, and you're going to say, okay, I want to dedicate 20% of that to charitable giving. So you're going to put $10 million in another trust you call a charitable trust, so that's the $10 million that you're going to give away. And that's all it is. It's just another place to park those funds and keep them separate from the rest of whatever else you're doing. Okay, but then this, this foundation thing or whatever, if the, if the tax goes away, it wouldn't be the big deal to be able to share to individuals without the foundation, or do I still have to go the foundation route also? No. I don't, I don't believe you're going to need a foundation. Do you, Jim? Jim? Sorry, my mark, my, my, my mic was off. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I know. You don't, Do you think I, she's I, going I think to need a foundation for giving? Yeah. You don't need a foundation for, for anything. I think once the new system is set up, you just give the money okay. away. I mean, the only reason we have all of these foundations is for somebody to make a profit. And the reason everybody wants a 501c3 or a 501c or whatever is, is they want to be able to take people's money without having to pay taxes on it. And that's going to be, that's behind us now, physically. Yeah. It's behind us. It's just a matter of time before people realize that we don't need to do that. We do it our way. We give what we want to give to who we want to give it to. That is going to be wonderful. Now, the family maintenance thing, I need more information. You have it on the, I mean, first I heard of it. But that sounds well, like an absolutely talk about it. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so, we know that. You know, a lot of people are not going to, they're going to have some money, which is more than they've ever had, but it's not going to be the sums that a lot of us are going to have. So let's say you gifted somebody uh, a million IQD. You're looking at, oh, you're looking at a lot of money dump in these people's laps and they don't know what they're going to do with it. So this is going to make it pretty simple for them. Well, just real quick, without wasting more time, lots of young people, none of us knew how to handle it, but part of one of my other trust members here, family, grew up in family of alcoholics. As soon as Dad got money, they even had to break the Christmas toys to keep him from Dad taking the money back. So he gets out of the Army now, years later, with a disability, had $26,000 
And because all he knew how to do is spend it, within six weeks, it was gone. He never bought a car, never put a down payment on a house, anything. He's back oh. in the street. Because what did you say your money did? It's surprising yeah. how quickly that money runs through your fingers. And this little boy had to break his toys on Christmas Day so Daddy didn't take it for beer money. And here he is out of the Army with a $26,000 disability. And in six weeks, he'd spend it on toys and guns and things. And so this is... This thing is wonderful. I'm so glad to hear you've done that. Uh, one last thing, then. We shouldn't have any problem to just, and we will be able to write a check out of the maintenance trust or whatever you call that thing, to give money to somebody, uh, $5,000 or 3000 right off the bat, just to give somebody a, a little break and pay some back bills when this goes through. What's the best way to handle those that? Um, that's yeah. kind of up to you. I mean, it's, it's really up yeah. to you. Uh, you could create a, a small trust, like this new trust, it would be perfect for that. Uh, but you can give it out of any trust as provided that um, we have the laws that are changed to not beat you up for doing that. And we don't know exactly where the IRS is going to go or when it's going to go away. We have great faith that this week when this all happens, that the and we'll never have to worry about that. So would, it's just whatever you wanted to put it. Yeah. Would you and also, you, man, you want to keep go ahead. Anon- okay, go ahead, Sharon. Yeah, well, you want to keep anonymous. So we, in the past, suggested using an attorney to handle all the giving. Yeah. You know, if it's twenty, fifty, hundred bucks here and there, it's not a big deal. But if it's real money, you know, so just going to an attorney or legal form, to, legal firm to do that giving. This way, nobody who's receiving the funds really knows who the donor is who the giver of that money is, it's just a way to keep uh, a private and anonymous. And we're all going to need a certain level of security and certain people not knowing essentially where this money originated. So giving it anonymously that way certainly protects you, protects your identity. Would you recommend when I put it in to say just my personal bank account, uh, just for example, I'm just going to throw out $50,000 that then I would be able to, with no restrictions from the trust, $1,000 here, $2,000 there, or this or that, that's not connected to the trust for incidental help my son pay his back mortgage payments due to being out of work and mm. COVID and such and stupid things. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, you uh, get that one? Yeah. I love the last part of that statement. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. You know, uh, Seems like Americans become a bunch of people wearing a bunch of masks. Yes, I'm telling you, unbelievable. Okay, so oh. there's various ways you can do this. You can pull some cash out at at uh, the exchange and tell you want a second. You want to put this amount of money in this trust, and I want X amount of dollars put in my personal account, and right. then you just go about and give that away. Just go give That's whatever what you want to do. That's yeah. kind of what Bob. Suggested. She's been paying attention, taking notes. So thank. You. Now the other gentleman. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that information. But these them, I got into it way back when they were eighteen dollars, and so for many, many months I figured I could afford eighteen dollars a month. But if I have more than I'm going to get a decent value of, I was going to give small amount of currency as tips to waitresses and such, but then they got to know what to deal with it. And I'm kind of rethinking that. But the same thing with the Zim, you guys' patience is incredible because after the last two nights of getting this other trust for this friend put together, I was ready to tear my hair out at 1130 at night. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> to give them a Zim and then try to help them know what to do with it. Uh, any suggestions? Yeah, don't give out Zims to people you don't know. Um, they won't know what to do with it. You're just wasting it. I would say, um, you know, I'm, I usually carry, and I shouldn't say this, but I will, I carry usually four or five $20 bills with me at all times, and I've been known just to hand somebody a $20 bill. I, there was a, uh, this waitress where I go, and I don't buy specific type of food very often. It's, we got a place called Nancy's Burgers, the best burger I've ever had in my life. Anyway, um, this gal that waited on me, um, I know she's having a really tough time, so I gave her an extra 20 the other day, and uh, it was wild. Okay, Our now I had a thought. 
She just got so overwhelmed and so emotional. Even $20 changed her life. Now, Mm -hmm. keep that in mind, folks. We're going to have oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of money. 20 bucks changed this woman's life. So I carry money around. I give it away. You need to do the same thing. And we can put it, take it from any place. Who gives a rip if we got to pay a little taxes on that money we give away? We're helping each other. And I had thought of, I'll throw this out if you suggest or anyone else. So I've got a local banker. I live up in Longview, by the way, so I'm the way up from you somewhere. But if I have my local banker, even my credit union, well, probably has to be the banker, and say, okay, I have given away, and I have in the past over the years, some 25s and some 10,000s, and if they still have them, i got to get in touch with them and say they're really valid. They don't know what in the world to do with them. Say, okay, Mr. Banker, there's a few of these coming in. Could I refer them to come to you and bring this in and ask for you because then they'd have help turning it in? Would that be a valid thing to do? Sure. Um, they're going to pay taxes on that a little bit, I think, but, you know, it's it, they're not set up with a trust, so they're going to pay a little bit in taxes. But look yeah. what they're getting. They're getting yeah. a lot of money. You know? yeah. and, and so, so what? You know, it, It's going to come out okay. It's going to come out okay. I mean, Well, uh, it's better I than I don't, I'm not about to go to the bank with every one of them, and if, you know, if they let me, and to them they say, well, I just don't know what. One lady just says, well, I don't know what to do with it. I'm not even going to bother. Rather than that, if they had a banker's contact number and the banker was willing to turn some of these in and say, I'm going to send them to you or to so-and-so here at the bank so they have a person to call that knows what they're talking about to make an appointment or whatever the procedure would be, if my banker's handling my money, he can do those perks for me, I'm thinking. Well, make it one of your perks that you're going to request. You're going to, you know, we're all going to request certain perks. Make that one of your requests and say, you know, this is, uh, this is my request. It's not optional, Mr. Banker. You're going to do this because it's okay. going to help humanity. Yeah, it's Just make happen. them do yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anything else, Sharon? No. Uh, I, since Bob said you'd answered right away, and I said, well, I sent this in a couple of days ago, but I will rescan or scan it in the other page, too, and I'll get it back out to you. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Uh-huh. Thanks. Bye. Uh, Donna, are you there? Yeah. You're hi. You're a long guy. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. I started out with one, but then, of course, added to them as the uh, call was going on. Um, back to the trusts um, and the We have to renew our trust every 25 years. I was curious if you had information on the difference between our trust and, say, the St. Germain Trust or the Thomas Paine Trust, which have survived for hundreds of of years. So I didn't understand why we have to do every 25 years, which, you know, so that's that question. Do you know anything the difference? Well, it's a... a, um, Continuity of life, isn't it, Jim? It makes a, a corporate yeah. char- characteristic. Right. And, and what, what we, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to try to say. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> uh, exactly. And uh, it's just every 25 years. And I've got three of them here that I just had to renew this last year that hit their 25th birthday. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal. You just write a minute. Yeah. Okay, so then basically it would act the same way, but we just have to renew it and make a minute every 25 years, and that could go yeah. on for generations and generations? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, let me find out. Here we go. Um, oh, could you give me an example of how I could possibly inadvertently screw up my trust? I'm just, like an example of a blunder <laughs> in record keeping and minutes and common mistakes that can void or nullify the trust? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would nullify the trust other than, um, yeah, I can't think of anything. Yeah. How would, yeah. how could commingling, the commingling is the biggest thing that comes to my mind. Commingling you your money with trust money. 
If the trust is not to be your personal piggy bank. You're okay, going to get money from the trust, but it's going to be in the form of a, a salary or a loan or something like that. You just don't inadvertently take money out of the trust and put it in your own bank account. That's, that would be commingling. Okay. Um, now, I was also wondering, I have a self-administered Roth IRA, and I bought uh, a, a, an amount of dinar that, uh, that I don't have possession of. It's in... Uh, it's, it's being held uh, uh, in a depository for when this happens. I'm wondering, do you, uh, do you, I think I, I, I think I might need to have two um, scheduled things because one's in that, in that, in that, uh, that self-administered Roth IRA and the, uh, the rest of it of my dinar I, and other currencies I, I possess. I'm not exactly sure how to go forward with that when it comes time to, to uh, the revalue. Any idea? I have no idea on that. Yeah, me either. Because I don't know what to put as far as the dinar that I, I, I have. You know, I, I can't, I don't think I should put that as included in the amount for the trust because it's in a different vehicle at the moment. Yeah. And to my knowledge, you can't put the Roth IRA in a, uh, in a trust. Right. Okay. So you, you're gonna, you, so you, the only thing I can think of is you get, take the dinar out of there and put it back in your trust. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I'll have to give them a call and go at it that way. Because uh, since it's an IRA, I'm not exactly sure I, I uh, had it had a had a process that. Um, and somebody was asking about where to get Zim. There's another place that I know a friend of mine bought some Zim this week from the Great American Coin Company. Dot com. So they uh, they did uh, negotiate some Zim for, for my friends. So that's another um, place I thought I would just uh, try to be help, helpful with that. Okay. And, yeah, thank uh, you for that. You're welcome. Oh, I, uh, I changed my venue for my post office when we lost the original one that I had. And I think I sent the paperwork to the IRS. I, but I, I, you know, like I can't be a hundred percent if I if I actually did it because I'm I'm not you know paperwork is not my forte which is why I asked the question about the blunders. But um, <laughs> is there a way to check if they received it or I know I sent it to you guys. I do believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't be sure of anything. So uh, what should I do? I mean, like, should I resend? the information to the IRS just to be double sure or um, I'm not sure what to do with that. Um, I don't have any idea how to even check it other than to call them and talk to them. But that takes forever on the phone. You can be hours I waiting to get somebody. I'm the phone these days. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that was that was pretty much it. I'm going to have to. That was one of those blunder questions I was curious about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Donna. You have a good day. All right. Thank you for your call. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye. Ron, are you there? Hi. This is Judy from Chicago with Hi. Susan. Hi, Hi. Judy and, Hi. and Susan. Hi. I appreciate so much everything that everybody's done. I'm like, I, my mind is like overflowing with everything I've learned. I, I can't even keep it straight. It's so, so mm -hmm. helpful. I'm so grateful that we connected with both Carol and Jim. And Jim, you said something about the number on the bond, the A, and I somehow did not. I just would like you to repeat those two numbers, the A. I think it was A, B, or A, 3 or something. It's A, A, or A, B. Okay. That's a bond. Um, now remember, folks, when you go in there, you are going to exchange your currency, not cash it in. Exchange mm -hmm. it. The gentleman earlier said that. I should have said something to him. And you're going to redeem the bond. Redeem the bond. Exchange your currency. You've got to get that okay. in your head. Exchange your currency. Redeem your bonds. Otherwise, you're going to yep. trouble. Yep. Okay. Exchange the currency, redeem the bond. Thank you. Exactly. All right. All right. All right. Anything else? Anything else, Judy? Um, no, that was great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Chris. Hi, can you hear me? 
Yes, we yeah. can. Wonderful. I'm talking to my computer. I don't do that much. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. So I'm brand new. Um, I was um, able to get your information off of Dom's call last night. Okay. So do you have a replay number? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, we do. Um, if you look at the uh, email that Dom sent out, it should be on the bottom of it. Uh, I just opened that to get your, make sure I had your name right, Carol. I don't want to call you someone yeah. else. Let's see. Okay. Let me see if I got it. I've got it here somewhere. Not but, um, let's see here. I, I just logged out of his email. Give me one second. Okay, here it is. And um, sorry about that. Let me go back down to the bottom. Okay, okay, so I'll look for that because I don't want to take up much time. Next, may I have your email address? I'm sorry, a website, website. It's well, the indicator. Website is www. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Okay, it's indicatorinformation.com. I-N-D-A, I-N-D-A-C-D-O-R, information, I-N-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N.com. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So next question. Can you help me understand? Um, so statutory trust, they all have EIN numbers. And so we already know Elizabeth Warren and all of her little crooked people are trying to change the wealth tax laws and change the laws so they can um, get inside these trusts. So can you tell me how is this trust different with this EIN number attached to it not following statutory law? Well, it's not – actually, nothing follows statutory law. I mean, it is, it is part of the law, part of maritime, basically. The EI number is issued to the trust only for banking purposes. You have no choice in this. That's, okay. And since there is no option allowed to you by law, because the banks will not open an account unless you have an EI number, then they can't claim, well, just because you got an EI number, you're now statutory. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Uh, there's there's no nothing out on the records that the, the law says just because you got an EI number it doesn't mean it's it's statutory. We okay, do so, actually notarize mm-hmm. three places on the trust, but we notarize names. We don't notarize trust. So the trust has That's three correct. places where it's notarized. See the trust. Here's let's back up two steps. Okay, the trust is a very unique animal. This particular one's irrevocable, and it has a series of contracts. There's four contracts, so it's it's a contract cast in trust form. First contract's when the creator entices an investor to participate. That's the first contract. Then the creator shops for a trustee, which is usually the investor because the investor exchanged certain assets and has intimate knowledge of those assets, so why not hire him to be the trustee or her? And then that's the second contract. Third contract is when the trustee verifies that the trust is now valid and operational, and the fourth is when he creates a board of trustees. So you see it's a series of contracts mm-hmm. that's cast in trust form. It's not a, 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 a statutory trust designed to implement one thing. This thing's got a wide range of things you can do with it. So, and it won um, all the way up to uh, the Ninth Circuit of a of appeals, and it was actually remanded to the Supreme Court. It was looked at. They said, yes, is it a stand, send it back. So it's already been up to the highest court. What judge in the right mind is going to challenge it? So, okay, so Jim, Jim, here's the thing for me. So I've been in this for like nine years, and let me tell you, I really read, I really study, and it's just so many different variations of these common law trusts. So when I'm reading um, information about of Congress being able to change the laws on statutory trust where they can actually go into the accounts because I thought you couldn't penetrate a trust. But I guess I'm learning different. How are we ensured that they cannot penetrate any of our trust under common law? Well, it's not so much the common law. It's the right of contract. You're guaranteed the right to contract. So that's why this trust is so strong. It's a series of contracts. It's not a trust. It's cast in trust form for the convenience of the document, but it's a series of contracts, and they cannot impede your right to contract. 
So it's a different animal. So I can learn all of this on your website? Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. now here's my last one. And um, again, I'm, I'm just learning here. So I hear irrevocable complex segregated asset trust. You have a contract trust, and then you have a pure trust. Are they all similar with just different variations to them? Well, yeah, it depends on how they're, they're written. But the issue is each end of the individual that wrote it, wrote it for a specific purpose, and then everybody's tried to use it for a different purpose. So this one was written for a specific purpose. And since it's a series of contracts, it can be called a common law trust because it's, it's what it is. It's capped in the common law trust. Uh, contract. So, obviously, we call them a lot of trust. So, all of those names, they designate the reason for having a trust, what, the pure trust, okay? There's five or six different ways to use one of those. I don't like them. I don't use them. Uh, I like what we have. It's never been um, overturned, and I just don't pay any attention to the rest of this stuff because I know that we have the right to contract. That's the biggest issue. May I just have your opinion on why you don't have the pure trust? You're breaking up real bad. We've lost a yeah. lot of it. I hear a lot okay. of noise. It's okay. Uh, may I have your opinion on why you do not like the pure trust? Uh, it would take a while to discuss it. I would like to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to burn up a lot of time on this call for that. Okay. Um, okay. You know, I'd rather do it a one-on-one. -on -one. It's... It's my experience that we that, that I'm relying on, not so much my opinion as what I've seen go wrong with them. So, you know, you know I can I, I could probably write a small book on that one. Okay. All the things that go wrong. Okay, so that's why because the first thing Carol said was you don't need a guarantor, you don't need a protector, you don't need this, and all these other trusts are saying you do need those things because you need other parties, which I have have never been fond of. You need other parties to sign your behalf. So I guess would this be a contract? It kind of eliminates all the other provisions. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct because it's a series of contracts. You don't need a protector. Who's protecting what from whom? I mean, the right. assets owned by the trust. You're the trustee. Who are you protecting it from? Nobody. Okay. Well, I sure am glad that. Um, I had an opportunity to hear this, because like I said, I'm constantly looking, but you can never really trust the Internet, because you just never <laughs> know. No, you can't. The information, they can, they can put anything out there, and I don't drink a lot of Kool-Aid, so I just, um, I like to research. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I do look forward to being able to speak to at least one of you, um, not the thing of Tyson, so when he's up, we would like to go on the East Coast. We would like to talk, and uh, we just want to get the right vehicle for ourselves and for our generations. Uh, we have three right. children. We want to get everybody set up. The kids have all been a part of this for nine years, so we all, we all know what the routine is. We're just trying to find the right vehicle to put the money into, and then to have the right way to use everything through a good stewardship on um, how we segregate all the assets as well. We can do that, but you're, we're losing you. It's getting deeper yeah, and deeper definitely. down there in the rabbit hole. So, what, you know, we, I've given my phone number out, and we'll give both of our phone numbers out at the end of the call. Feel free to call us directly, but you're, we've pretty much lost you. I'm sorry. Okay, but thank you. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, we've got two more. Okay, it's quarter after three. We have two more calls, and that's it, folks, okay? Okay. Linda, you're back. So let me, am I muted? No, nope. I can hear you. Can't hear you now, I did a moment ago. Okay, can you now? Linda? Yes, now yes, I can hear you. There? Okay. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, if I don't have a wealth management person at my bank, I just recall there is a small Edward Jones office 30 miles away, and I do know the man personally. He has uh, taken care of my parents' finances. Is that a good place to go or no? No. <laughs> no. Um, no I, I would prefer for you to, when you do the exchange, they'll have a list uh -huh. of people that are pre, 
uh, briefed on what the these trusts are. They'll be pre-briefed on the, the new financial system. They'll be pre-briefed on all the things that we're going to have to go through. Uh, the guy mm-hmm. that you're going to be talking to that's running your parents, he has no clue. Uh, trust me on this. He has yeah. no yeah. clue. And okay. they're trying to keep okay, it as quiet as possible, but it's out there. But I would wait until you go there. They're going to give you a, a – they're, they're going to introduce you to multiple wealth management companies, and you can pick one. If you don't like them, you can fire them and go find another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, one more question. Uh, on this abstract of trust and the EI that I'm going to phone you and get, I have three separate projects that I will be pitching when I go into my appointment. Will I need – before I go in, three separate trusts because no. two of these I'm not no. really I'm not going to be involved in two of those. There's other family no. members. You just need to have a trust to get your money into a trust, and then you will go to another set of appointments where they'll work with you, and then you set up the additional trust at that time, and they'll give you time they, to set up the trust. You yeah. won't be rushed. Uh, you know, the first okay. one you got to get ready as fast as possible. The other ones is, you yeah. know, well, whenever you get it done, come back and see us, and we'll finish it up for you, basically what they're going to say. And they will do common law trust, even though they didn't the first time, but they would the no, second time. No, they're not going to do the trust. We are still going to do the trust. But they will advise oh. you on what you need. Oh, okay. And then I'll come back to you. Okay. Right, right. They're okay. going to tell you what, uh, what I was talking about. They're going to tell you which wealth manager companies – are available to you, you get to interview them. And then when mm. you interview them, you find one, and then you tell them what your projects are, then they'll say, well, okay, get your trust done, which was what we'll do, and then we'll present those to you. You take them to them, they verify, and they start helping you build your empire. Okay. And we can do this during that 90-day non-disclosure period? Oh, yes, no? absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. okay. Oh, good. That's right. We can. So, can you give us a, a an estimate of how long this first appointment will last? How long should we plan to be there? Um, I've heard it in <laughs> ten minutes to an hour. Yeah, me too. Oh, an hour is okay. I was, I was yeah, afraid it might be half a day. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. One last caller from Roselle, Illinois. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. you can. Hello. Hi, this Hi. Is Angela. Hi. Hi, Angela. Um, I'm, I'm very new at this also, and I'm hearing a lot of stuff, and I'm so confused. Okay, so if I, when I go to the exchange and uh, put my currency in uh, trust, if I already have an account with another bank, can I use that same trust to put my currency in at, at the exchange? Um, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry, you lost me. Okay, mm-hmm. so you you want you have a trust. You're gonna go to the exchange. You're gonna exchange your currency into that trust. Now, but but that trust that trust is at. A, I already have a trust that a, at a, an account uh, with that trust at another bank already. Okay. It's, so I, it's set I, up. I, so your money trust is set up. You just let them know where it is. Yeah. Oh, I can do that, even if it's at a Wells Fargo, because, you know, I mean. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm with Wells Fargo, and I have my mother already established. Yeah, okay. Me too. All right. Okay, and I keep hearing you say an EI number. Are you talking about an EIN number? Okay, yes. Think, the, oh, yeah. the N Here's is number. <laughs> e, oh, okay. It's, okay. just a minute, it's an e-employee identification number. So it's an employee identification an EI number. If it's an EIN number, then you're saying it's an employee identification number number. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, because I was confused. I was like, I know I have an EI that it shows EIN, but you kept saying just EI, and I was like, okay, is that something else? Okay, nope. and then the other thing I, I heard, I heard the gentleman speaking about that Cheyenne, that, uh, that, that P.O. box, I guess. In Cheyenne, yep. or, but, yep. well, my husband had one had one of those, but the last information I see on this is dated 2018. Why would I need that? I'm not sure what that's actually for. The address it's, it's, is the domicile of the trust, and it was in Cheyenne. There was a company there that we were using, or we knew about, and we recommended, and they got in trouble and had to be closed down. So there's oh. one in another town in Wyoming, and then we've got there's actually four that we We've worked with to set up these accounts for people. 
they're on our website. There's uh, two in Washington, one in Florida, and one in what other town is that in, in um, Wyoming? Evanston, Carol? Wyoming. Evanston. Evanston. Yeah. Senior so, moment. So is that needed? Do I have to have that? Yes. Yes. They have to have some way of, of, of uh, establishing your domicile. Okay. Carol, I'll be calling okay. you later. <laughs> okay. All righty. No problem, Angela. No problem. Okay. I think that's all I have. Thanks for your help. All right. Well, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. One, one more. Do I have to have yep. um, a, 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 a sep- I keep hearing about a separate account for each, dom- each of your currency. Do I have to? Like an account for dinar. Account that's, for dinar. that's what we're being told. We don't know. Oh, that's what we're being told. Okay, a separate account, so not a separate trust. It's a separate account. Yeah. Okay. So we don't know yet. No. Nope. Not. Not. Okay. Not, no. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Thanks a lot for everything, guys. Because I. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye bye. All, right. all right. Okay. Bye. Jim. Jim, you want to do one more? Sure. Okay. James, area code 510, are you there? Yes, Brother James. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Yeah. How you doing, um, uh, Mr. Knox? I was. I had a question. You know, the uh, management trust? Mm-hmm. Is that, we pay, you pay that monthly? Or how, do that, how do that work? No, no, you don't pay anything monthly. The management trust is a, man, is a trust set up to manage all of your checking accounts. Okay, so you don't need a checking account for the house. You don't need a checking account for the car. You don't need a checking account for the boat. You need a checking account to write the checks to cover all of those. So you, instead of having all of these accounts, we put together this idea of having a management account. And so the management trust has a, a, a checking account at the bank, has a contract with the real estate trust, with the automobile trust, with the boat trust, to pay all of its bills. So the money's harbored in the account where the management trust has its account. It could be a couple million bucks. We don't know. And then when the bill is due for your property tax, it writes the check. That's all it is. It's just a convenient way of managing all of your assets with one checking account. That makes sense. The annuity? And how do the annuity work? Well, the annuity trust, okay, if you wanted to... And I have a younger brother that's got some issues. <clears throat> I've got a trust set up for him. I'm buying an annuity for the trust. The trust owns the annuity. Although there's an individual has to be in, involved, so it's through the annuity to my brother. And he'll get X amount of dollars every month or however long, 20 years, 30 years. So the annuity trust is set up to give long-term income to those people that you want to benefit that you're afraid they're going to blow the money. Uh, my brother probably was, you know, probably would blow some money. So I want to make sure he has got money coming in for the rest of his life. That's what the annuity trust is about. You can have multiple annuities to an annuity trust. You can have one for, you know, Betty, one for Bob, one for Joe, one for Ronnie, you know, whatever you want to do. And it's just a way now for you to buy. Pay- Pardon me, go ahead. We don't have to pay for, we have to pay for a new trust. Each time, or no, you can do everything through one trust. I could say okay. you got to buy one for everybody. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, you just need one trust that's going to do that. You know, it, it's we're we're not trying to get you to buy a million trusts. We're trying to get your assets protected. You now, if you have, you know, two cars in one trust, that's a no-no because if you wreck one car, they'll get both cars. Mm-hmm. So you have to look at this from, yeah, it costs some money, but sometimes if you're too frugal, you're going to lose your butt because something happens. But on the annuity issue, you can have multiple annuities through one trust, and they can pay to whomever you want. Now, the unique thing oh. about this is upon their demise, the annuity still comes to the trust because the trust is paying the annuity amount. So the money still comes to the trust. Now you've got that you can give to somebody else. So, you know, another family member or friend or whatever. So it's kind of a unique situation we've created. Oh, okay. So we just, like, get a statement at the end of the month to find out what's going on, basically. Yeah, what happens is, is mm-hmm. let's say that uh, one of the, the participants 
passes away due to age. Well, that money still comes to the trust. Just because they're gone doesn't mean the money's not coming to the trust. So now you've got that same amount. You say it's $1,000 a month. I don't know. I'm just using a number. So you've got $1,000 a month that you're not spending. So now you need to find somebody else to give it to. Yeah. Right. You can be another member. So it's, it goes in into per- perpetuity in as much as it continues after their demise. It's still available to use for somebody else. And that's why you would need a, a POD? No, you don't need a POD. Oh, okay. No, oh, okay. Because you have successor trustees. That's why you do not need a POD. Oh, okay. Now, because I, I know when you deal with the bank, when you first go in, I thought you had to stipulate something like that. No. Well, you do. You're, you're telling them who your successor trustees are. It's the same difference. Well, it's a oh, similar okay. thing. Similar. Okay? Yeah, that's how they verify it. Okay, well, it's good to know. I didn't know that. So that's the question I had. I wasn't sure, so I just want to verify it. And I appreciate you, Jim and Carol, and keep up the good work. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thanks. Well, Jim, we have kept our attention for uh, uh, time today. <laughs> so you want to go ahead and add your contact information? Sure. I'm on the West Coast in, unfortunately, Salem, Oregon. <laughs> I'm at area, uh, area code 503-583-6791. The best email for business is security at indicatorinformation.com. I prefer to work Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, but because of pending things happening, I'm going to be working a lot more hours, including the weekend. So um, don't call me before 6 in the morning, please. <laughs> it work for me. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you all for your attendance and attention for this uh, lengthy call today. We appreciate it. Once again, my name is Carol Worlius. My phone numbers are 425-820-8090 and 877-333-5018. And I'm currently in Florida, so I'm available between 10 and 6 Eastern time. Carol, my email address is, yes? Before yes, we go yes. off, just go ahead and continue, what? but I want one more thing. Go ahead. Okay. My email address is info at indicatorinformation.com. Go RV and have a great week, and let's see what Jim has to say. <laughs> I appreciate the surprise guest we had today. Thank you, Dom. You're a hero. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Big addition. Big addition. Okay, guys, go ahead. Have a great week, and hopefully Dom's right. We'll all be at the bank next week. Take care. Bye-bye.